message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 26. Acts 26. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straitest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Acts 27. 
And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners onto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day, we touched at Zidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoised up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. 
and falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless you for your children. Thank you for your people. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our faith in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for how you are leading us on and moving us on. Oh, Lord, I pray every member of this church, from the children to the youth to the students to the adults, the daddies and the mommies, oh, Lord, I pray your blessing will never stop in every life. From strength to strength, from power to power, from healing to health, and from poverty to prosperity in Jesus' name. Bless your people even now. Let this miracle continue in every life. Sustain the miracle power. Maintain the miracle power. And I pray, Lord, all the needs of your people will be supplied in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing upon every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Daniel 11 verse 32. The second part, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. What we need is knowledge, the knowledge of who God is, the knowledge of his power, the knowledge of his promises, the knowledge of his goodness. The people that do know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Thank God the believers are here. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick. What will happen? And they shall recover. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans 16, verse 20. Here we find what the Lord is telling us about this new army. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Give me a good amen. amen. Satan will be under your feet. I want to speak to you this time the secret of experiencing miracles daily. The secret of experiencing miracles daily. That every day, not only when you are here, you, you are here, you, you are strengthened. You are here, you are energized. You are here, you are empowered. You are here, the anointing comes upon your life and miracles begin in your life. And then it goes on and on and on every day. What is the secret? Please write the word miracle. M. I R A C L E S M your mouth you keep and control your mouth because either miracle or misery is in your mouth if you speak the word of God Make the spoken word be co to comply with the written word and always say the word. This is what God says I am. This is what I will be. The power of miracle will be in your mouth in Jesus' name. I instruction. He gives you instruction. And as you keep that instruction and make it your companion, like your brother, like your sister, Make that instruction your companion. What it says unto you, you carry out every time. Miracles will continue. R is for righteousness. Because the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. How do you keep the miracle power? By keeping your mouth, your conversation, your tongue, the words of your mouth to be in agreement every time with the word of the living God and then the instruction instruction in righteousness 
that will make you powerful, make you purposeful, make you profitable. The word of God, the instruction in the word, this word shall never depart out of your mouth. You'll observe to do everything that is written there. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you make your way successful. Righteousness, effectual, fervent, prayer of a righteous man, availing much, a for authority. You come under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like the centurion said, I am a man under authority. And I say unto this man, go, and he goeth. And unto this man, come, and he cometh. When you abide under the authority of the name of Jesus, the authority of the Lordship of Jesus, the authority of the control of Jesus. That's what makes the miracle power to be keep on flowing in your life. See, it's the commandment of the Lord. You keep that commandment. You observe that commandment. You do that commandment. That's why he tells us in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, A. Thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments. Give your ear, your attention, your focus to the word of God, to the commandment of the Lord. Then it says, I will put none of these diseases which are put upon the Egyptians upon you. For I am the Lord that he lets thee. And then L is the landmarks. The landmarks of the word of God. The pillars of the word of God. The doctrines that mark the territory of the word of God. You keep to those landmarks. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Proverbs 22 verse 28, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. The landmarks of the word of God, you will not deny them. You will not destroy them. You will not displace them. You keep to them all the talking of the teaching that the Lord has given us. Look at Proverbs 23 verse 10. Proverbs 23 Reading from verse 10. Remove not the old landmark. Enter not into the field of the fatherless. Keep those landmarks. Keep those landmarks. They make the miracle power to continue in our lives. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that are given to change. M for your mouth. I for his instruction. R for righteousness. A for authority. C for commandments. L for the landmarks. E for his example. Conform your life unto his example. If you want to do the same thing Jesus did, talk like he talked. Live like he lived. Behave like he behaved. Conduct your life like he conducted his life. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. That we, that ye shall follow his steps. Follow his example, his steps. S is for the scripture. S is for the scripture. That's how to experience. That's how to preserve. That's how to maintain. That's how to have the miracle power, unction, anointing. Continue in your life. That's... You live everything in conformity to the scriptures. Because he tells us in John chapter 10. John chapter 10 verse 35. If he called them gods 
unto whom the word of God came. And the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture cannot be broken. That's a secret. You keep your mouth, keep your miracle. Keep his instruction, keep your miracle. Keep his righteousness and extend your miracle. Remain under his authority and keep your miracle. And then keep the commandments of the Lord. Observe the commandments of the Lord and uphold the landmarks. And then follow his example and keep to the scriptures the secret of experiencing miracles every day. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, connect and confide in the Lord's might. Connect, connect and confide in the Lord's might. Number two, cleave to and continue in the Lord's message. You cleave to the Lord. You stay with the Lord. You abide in the Lord. Cleave to and continue in the Lord's message. Number three, consecrate and conserve the Lord's miracles. Consecrate. Commit yourself to the Lord. And then you'll be able to conserve the Lord's miracles. Number one. What's number one? I said was number one. Connect and confide in the Lord's might. How do we connect with the Lord? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Connect with the Lord. If you don't connect yourself with power, how will power come into your life? If you don't connect yourself with the supernatural, how will this supernatural take place in your life? Connection. Connection. Divine connection. That's a secret. How to experience a miracle? How to extend the miracle? How to conserve the miracle? How to preserve the miracle? How to enlarge the miracle? You connect with the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. For the Lord to receive you, to connect to the Lord, you come out of the company assembly of evil doers. You come out of darkness. You come out of evil. It says, wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That is the connection. You will connect. I said you will connect in Job chapter 22. Connection. Connection. Job chapter 22. Reading there from verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty connection now, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. That's how to connect to the Lord. Sin out, the Savior in. Darkness out, light in. Evil out, goodness in. Hell out, heaven in. It says you connect by putting iniquity transgression, sin, evil doing, misbehavior out of your life, far away. Then in verse 24, it says then, thou shalt lay up gold as dust. This is the year of your prosperity. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have, and thou shalt have, I said, thou shalt have plenty of silver, and then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God, and thou shalt make thy prayers unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Verse 28, verse 28, and thou shalt also decree a sin. Say, how to have miracle? How to have your decree established and fulfilled? How to have all the promises of God, yes and amen in your life. Thou shalt also decree a thing. 
and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. It will happen in Jesus' name. Connection, connection, connection. You connect with the might of the Lord. You connect with the power of the Lord. You connect with the miracle walking authority of the Lord. In Psalm 91, connection, Psalm 91. Reading from verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. There's a personal identification with the Lord here. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. And in him will I trust. Because of that connection, surely, it shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. It shall cover thee with his wings. In, in, under his, under his, uh, with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. After that connection, every form of fear will vanish out of your life in Jesus' name. And then for the arrow that flies by day, for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, and for the destruction which wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. I shall not come near thee. I'm going to personalize that now, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand it shall not come near me amen only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee are you there? There shall no evil befall thee. In the day and in the night, there shall no evil befall thee. In the village and in the city, there shall no evil befall thee. In the plane or in the bus or on the train, there shall no evil befall thee. With friends or foes or enemies, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet because thou hast said he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me, and what will happen? And I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Huh. Look at this one. Verse 16. Read it for yourself. Won't you go With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It will happen in Jesus' name. That's a connection. That's a connection. And because of that connection, miracles will follow you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. And I'm looking at verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 24. Here it says, and the, inhabitant of the, and the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. For the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. When you connect with the Lord and you live in the land of signs and wonders, all sicknesses, they are things of the past in Jesus' name. They will not follow you home they will not be in your life, in your body anymore. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. I'm reading from verse 24. 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. 
Before the call, I will answer. Every prayer you pray at home, God will answer. Every prayer you pray on the way, God will answer. Anywhere you go, when you open your mouth and you pray unto the God of heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has become your Father also, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. And shall come to pass that before the call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, while they are yet speaking, while they are yet speaking, I will hear a new day has come in your life. In Jeremiah chapter 33, Jeremiah chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Every new day will bring a new miracle in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, clip to and continue in the Lord's message. Clip to it, clip to it, clip to it, and continue in the Lord's message. You see the secret of the people experiencing continual miracle, continuous miracle, everyday miracle, permanent miracle, perpetual miracle, is that you cleave to the Lord. You cleave to the Lord. You remain, you abide with the Lord. Cleave to the Lord. Cleave to the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 4. You cannot forget this. Chapter 4 verse 4. But she that cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. You are alive. He maintains you by miracle power. Cleaving to the Lord. Ye that cleave to the Lord, you are alive until this day. Chapter 10 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10, cleaving to the Lord. Cleaving to the Lord. Cleaving to the Lord. It says in verse 20, chapter 10, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve. And to him shalt thou cleave. To him shalt thou cleave. You cleave unto him. He is thy praise in verse 21. He is thy God in verse 21. That has done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Then in verse 22, thy fathers were down into Egypt with three score and ten persons. And now the Lord thy God has made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. You'll become a multitude in Jesus' name. Chapter 11 of Deuteronomy, clip to the Lord. It's a secret of maintaining that miracle, of keeping that miracle, of, 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 of uh, preserving that miracle. Chapter 11, verse 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command thee to do them, and to love the Lord your God, and to walk in his ways and to cleave unto him and to cleave unto him no separation from the lord no backsliding from the lord no divorce no apostasy and cleave unto him then will the lord drive out all these nations from before you and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves every place whereon the soles of your foot shall tread, shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river and from the Euphrates, even to the uttermost sea, shall, shall your course be. It will be so in Jesus' name. And if you cleave to the Lord, verse 25, verse 25, there shall no man be able to stand before you. No occultic man be able to stand before you. No medicine man be able to stand before you. No idol worshiper be able to stand before you. No talisman, a fellow, will be able to stand before you in Jesus' name. For the Lord your God, he shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Chapter 13, cleave to the Lord. Cleave to the Lord. Cleave to the Lord. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 1. Reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign of the wonder come to pass 
whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go at our other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you, is testing you, trying you, examining you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. Tell me as if you are going to do it. And cleave unto him. And cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. To thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife, the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee. From the one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him. That means you'll not allow any man or any woman, however close to you he might be or she might be, to make you divorce the Lord, to make you separate from the Lord, to make you backslide. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hack in unto him. Neither shall then I pity, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him, him or her. We're going to cleave unto the Lord unto the very end in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 23. Joshua chapter 23. From verse 8. Joshua 23, 8. Cleave. Unto the Lord, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day, as you have done, abiding in the watch of the Lord, abiding under the protection of the Lord, abiding under the authority of his word, obeying the commandments of his mouth, as you have done unto this day, cleaving to the Lord, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you great nations and strong nations. But as for you, no man has been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. Have you gone back home? I said one of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you on the condition you abide in him, on the condition you continue with him, on the condition you cleave unto him. It says, the Lord your God, he will fight for you as he has promised you. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. You will abide in his word in Jesus' name. You've seen what it said in the Old Testament. Abide in the Lord, continue with the Lord, cleave unto the Lord. Come to the New Testament, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. The secret of experiencing miracles every day. Preserving your miracle every day. Continuing in permanent 
perpetual miracle life. It tells us in John chapter 8, from verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue, that's it. If he continue, that's it. You have repented, if he continue. You have received Jesus as your personal savior, if he continue. You have been sanctified and made holy, if he continue. You have your faith in God, and your faith is able to move every mountain, if he continue. You cherish the word of God, if you continue. You delight in the Lord, if you continue. And then you take in the word of God. This is mine. This is mine. He spoke to me directly, if you continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free, and the truth shall keep you free. You remain free in Jesus' name. Continue. Continue. I will continue. I said, I will continue. Every one of us will continue in Jesus' name. And the miracle power of the Lord will continue with us in Jesus' name. John chapter 15. Reading from verse 7. John chapter 15 verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. That's cleaving to the Lord. Cleaving to the message of the word of the Lord. Ye shall ask what ye will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. What's the next word there? Continue ye in my love. Continue ye in my love. Continue ye in my love. We'll continue in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We're looking at two verses of scripture. I want you to join those two verses together in your mind because they're joined together in the Bible. And what God has joined together, let no man, let no preacher put asunder. Don't separate them. They're together. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 42. And he continued. And they continued, those converts, and they continued, those disciples, and they continued, those believers, and they continued in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Look at what follows. And, the, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles in the continuity. The continuation in the word of God, abiding in the word, continuing in the word, living by the word every day of our lives that will make the favor of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the power of the Lord to continue in our lives. And every day of your life will be a day of miracle in Jesus' name. I said it will be a day of revival in your life in Jesus' name. In the day and in the night, miracle. Every day, miracle. Every week, miracle. It will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 11, verse 21. Acts chapter 11, verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great, a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. A great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Look at what follows verse 23. When he came and had seen the grace of God and was glad and exhorted them that were purpose of heart, pay attention, that were purpose of heart, pay attention now, with purpose of heart, they will tell me, cleave unto the Lord with purpose of heart. Because you know what you are looking for. Because you know you want the power of God to be remain and to be retained in your life. That the purpose of life, you will cleave and cleave and cleave unto the Lord. It tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Continue, cleave and continue. Cleave to the Lord and continue in his word. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate. Upon these things, give thyself wholly unto them, that their profit may appear unto all, and take heed unto thyself, 
and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Continue in them. Continue in them. Every day, look at the word. Read the word. Meditate on the word. Align your life of the word. Correct your life of the word. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Cleave unto the Lord and continue with his message. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But continue. But continue. You see, others may backslide, you will not backslide. Others may go back, you will not go back. Others may divorce the Lord, and they may even you know, go to the court of the world and then issue a bill of divorcement. They don't want to be with the Lord anymore. They have something against the Lord. Even though God has blessed them and taken care of them, they don't keep on cleaving. Just like you find some wives and some husbands. They've been loving each other. They've been continuing together. And one day, it may be the woman that will go to the court. I want to divorce the man. I want to divorce the woman. Cleave to your wife. Cleave to your husband. And like you cleave to your wife and cleave to your husband, cleave unto the Lord. Abide and remain forever with the Lord. From now until the rapture, you remain with the Lord in Jesus' name. I will not backslide. I said I will not backslide. Say it for yourself. I will not backslide. I will not separate from the Lord. Look at that again, chapter 3, verse 14. But continue, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Number one, you connect with the Lord's might and you confide in the Lord's might. Number two, you cleave unto the Lord and you continue in the Lord's message. Number three now, consecrate and conserve the Lord's miracles. Consecrate and conserve the Lord's miracles. You know, if you want to do something, find out somebody who has done that thing before and say, show me the way. How did you do it? And then if you follow the way he did it, you too, you'll be able to do it in Jesus' name. And so, if we say that the miracle power of God should be conserved in your life, preserved in your life, perpetrated in your life, permanent in your life, I want to find out, can I find some people that experienced the miracle power of God from the beginning of the time they knew the Lord until the end of the time they knew the Lord. Can I find them? If I can find them, can I follow their footsteps? Miracles. Everybody say miracles. Help me write this down. Help me and help yourself write it down. Miracles again. And you write it vertically. M. I. R. A C L E S give it to me. What is that? How is it that some people like you and I, having flesh and blood like you and I, of like compassion, of like passion, like you and I, the moment they connected with the Lord, they confided in the Lord. They were cleaving to the Lord. They continued, Lord, and the miracle power of God never stopped in their lives. I will show you the secret. This key is yours from today in Jesus' name. M for Moses. M for Moses. I for Isaac. I for Isaac. R for Rechabites. Rechabites, A for Abraham, A for Abraham, C for Caleb, C that's Caleb, L for Luke, E for Elisha, S for the Shunammite. If you can find out about all those men that spelled out the word miracle. 
And then every time you are following in the footsteps of those men and women too that had the miracle power, permanent and perpetual, continuous and continual in, in their lives. If you can find out what they did, what attitude they had, this miracle power will continue in your life in Jesus' name. M, for, who is that? Tell me, M, who is that? In, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Hebrews 11, verse 24, by faith. Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for the season. That's the secret that you will abandon. You will renounce the pleasures of sin. And then you will choose to identify and to be with the people of God, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for endured as seeing him who is invisible. Underline that in your Bible, seeing him who is invisible. When sickness comes, don't see sickness, see him who is invisible. When enemies come, don't see them, see him who is invisible. When poverty comes, don't meditate on the poverty, see him who is invisible. When challenges come, don't look at challenges like Moses, seeing him who is invisible. And miracles will show up in your life every day, every week, every month, all the rest of the years of your life. In Jesus' name, I for Isaac. I for Isaac. I'm looking at Genesis. Genesis chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 22. Verse 7, here is how the miracle power will continue in your life. Look at verse 7, and I six speak unto Abraham his father, and said, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a bunch offering? And Abraham said, my son, my God will provide himself a lamb. My God will provide himself a lamb. I can't see it, but God will provide himself a lamb. I do not even hear the bleaching of that ram, of the sheep, but God will provide himself a lamb. And Isaac rested his confidence in that. Full stop. The word of God brought a full stop in his life. The promise of God brought a full stop to all the questions. No question again. No question mark anymore. There's a full stop. God will provide himself a lamb. I do not see, but God will provide. I do not hear, but God will provide. I do not feel, but God will provide. I do not sense it, but God will provide. When you have that faith of Isaac, that the word of God brings a final full stop. No question anymore. There will be Jehovah Jireh in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now you will see it. I said you will see it. Are, who are they are standing for? Tell me out loud. The Rechabites, that's how to have the miracle power of God in your life. Rechabites, Rechabites, that's J Jeremiah chapter 35. Jeremiah chapter 35, I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 5. And I search before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, pours full of wine, and calves, and I search unto them, drinking wine. Here was Jeremiah that was sent to the house of the Rechabites. And Jeremiah was a respected prophet, a respected man of God, 
a respected personality, a VIP in the land, in the realm of religion. And this VIP, very important personality in religion, came to the Rechabites and said, here is wine, it's all free, drink. And see what the Rechabites said. This is how to retain the miracle power of God in your life. Because this is how these Rechabites retained the presence of God. The promises of God. The prophecy of the Lord. The power of the Lord in their lives. Look at verse 6. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, ye shall drink no wine, neither ye, nor your sons forever. Neither ye, nor your sons forever. You will not allow the posture of any man, the stature of any man, the posture of any woman, or the stature of any woman to derail you from your conviction or to cancel your conviction. You are one of the Rechabites. That's how the power of God, how the anointing of God will continue in your life. Look at verse 8. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all, in all, in all, that he has charged us to drink no wine all our days. We, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, and then you see the blessings of God upon them. Verse 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and has kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he has commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab, shall not lack, shall not miss, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. A for Abraham. A for Abraham. Romans chapter 4. You want, to, you want to have this miracle life continue until you become 100 years of age? or even beyond 100 years of age, here is a secret. Here is a secret. In Romans chapter 4, reading there from verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Here it tells us in verse 16, chapter 4 of Romans, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only, which is of the Lord, but to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead, and called those things would be not as though they were, how will the power continue your life calling those things which be not as though they were? You have not seen the miracle yet, but calling those things which be not as though they were. The money is still to come, calling those things which be not as though they were. You are married that appears there's no child in the physical yet, but you have the miracle baby already. Calling those things which be not as though they were. All the promises of God, you turn them into practical reality in your life. Calling those things which be not as though they were. And be not weak in faith in verse 19. He would not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarasum. You will not consider the things you see that looks dead. They look dead. They look anemic. They look non-existent anymore. But you are calling those things will be not as though they were. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. There will be a performance in your life in Jesus' name. See for who now? See for, tell me out loud, 
Caleb, that's my man, that's my senior brother. We're going to walk, we're going to talk the same. It's your brother, talk the same with Caleb. You'll talk the same way in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 30. This is the secret of continual miracle, daily miracle in our lives. Talk like Caleb. When other people are saying, we're like grasshoppers, we're weak, we're small, we're negligible, we're marginalized, we cannot do it, we're people loaded with problems, talk like Caleb. And we're told in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. Any able person there today, where are you? You are able in Jesus' name. You are the people that will enter that land. I said you will enter that land. And God will keep you for decades, for decades, and decades over decades. In Jesus' name. L for Luke. L for who? Luke. Why are we saying L is for Luke? You see, Luke had a kind of knowledge that many of his colleagues did not have. And it's a kind of knowledge that should have hindered him from miracles. Because he was a physician. He was a medical doctor. You know, some people, because of what they know about all the germs, about all the symptoms, about all the history and the case history, when this happens, that will happen. When that happens, this will happen. And if it has come to stage one and stage two to stage three and to stage four, it only remains about 30 days now and everything is over. They allowed their medical knowledge to hinder them. But Luke was the beloved physician. Look at what, what Luke wrote. See what Luke said. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, he allowed spiritual knowledge, supernatural knowledge, heavenly knowledge, divine impartation to overcome all the other knowledge of what he had in his studies or in science. He tells us in Luke chapter 1, reading there from verse 37, for with God, tell me, for with God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible when you allow scripture knowledge. To overcome sense knowledge. All the knowledge you have by the senses, by sight, by hearing, by smell, by touch, by feeling. You allow the knowledge of scripture to override that, overcome that, swallow that up. And you're still able to say, in spite of all your knowledge, like the beloved physician Luke, you're still able to say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. He also is the one, Luke is the one that wrote Acts of the Apostles. Let's see what Luke wrote in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, he gave all the glory to God. And he gave all the power, all the authority unto Christ, the great, great, great physician. In uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing how many people? Luke said he healed all, not that he healed some and left the rest for us to handle. There were some that Jesus could not handle. He had to give the right dose of us who are in the medical field. The rest were, no. Luke said, here is my faith. Here is my conviction. Here is what I'm writing. And he wrote this to the most excellent Theophilus, an officer in the land. He said, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Elisha now. Elisha, what we're saying is, if you can bring your attitude and your faith and your focus and your confidence to line up with that of Moses and line up with that of Isaac and line up with that of the Rechabites and line up with that of Abraham and make your faith and focus and faithfulness to line up with that of Caleb and with that of Luke and with that of Elisha. 
every day, even today, will be a day of miracle in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha now, 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 13. 2 Kings chapter 6, we're looking at verse 13. Verse 13, verse 13, it says in verse 13, and it said, go and spy where he is. That I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore said he thither horses and chariots and a great and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Alas, my master, how shall we do? In verse 16, and he answered, and he answered, Fear not. Everybody say, Fear not. Fear. Say it aloud, Fear not. Fear. Look at the person by your side and look at them eyeball to eyeball. Fear not. Fear. Look at the other side and say, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Where you can say that every time. Sickness is there. Oppression is there. Enemies rise up. Armies rise up. And you are hearing news. They are going to do this. You meet them in the dream. And you wake up. You say, greater you see that is in me than he that is in the world. Miracle is not far away. I said miracle is not far away. M for tell me. M for tell me, Moses, I for tell me, Isaac, R for tell me, Rechabites, A for tell me, C for who, and L for who, and E for who. Now S for tell me that now. The Shunammite, the Shunammite, the Shunammite, that's the one that said, it is well. It is well. I'm looking at this direction and I say, it is well. Everywhere I turn, I say, it is well. I look at you there, and I say, it is well. And then something coming here, something coming here. A wind is blowing there, and stop blowing here. And I say, don't worry about that. Tell me again. It is well. It is well all the days of your life in Jesus' name. 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, I'm reading here from verse 22, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 22, and she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and uh, one of the houses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore will thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, and she said, and she said, and you say, what do you say? It shall be well. Any money yet? Don't worry, it shall be well. How do you feel in your body? Don't worry, it shall be well. How about your head? Don't worry, it shall be well. How about your eyesight? Don't worry, it shall be well. How about your hearing? It shall be well. How about that leg? It shall be well. How about that your daughter you told me about? It shall be well. How about your son? It shall be well. Your place of work, I heard they were retrenching people, and now it's the number one, number two is gone, number three is gone, and then they say, the next one, they don't know who it is, but I say, but I say, but I say, it shall be well. It shall be well in our lives in Jesus' name. Verse 24, and then she saddled and asked and said unto her servant, Drive and go forward and slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God, to the Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold yonder is the Shunammite. Run now and say, I pray thee to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? It, is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, 
And she answered, and she answered, it is well. I said, it is well. How are you today? I said, how are you today? How is your body? I have a stomach ulcer. I have got cancer. I have tuberculosis. I have got premature death. I have poverty. It is well. I said it is well. I said it is well. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, it is well in Jesus' name. M for Moses. I for Isaac. R for the Rechabites, A for Abraham, and C for Caleb, L for Luke, E for Elisha, e S for the Shinamites, it is well with me. Rise up and declare it, it is well. Rise up and declare it, it is well. Rise up and declare it, it is well. That's the, that the secret of miracle all the days of your life. All the days of your life. All the days of your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and follow. See him who is invisible. See him who is invisible. And then let the prophecy bring a full stop to all the questions, all the inquiry. Let the promise of the Lord bring a full stop. Jehovah Jireh, God is going to provide. The Rechabites keep to the word of God. Let the Rechabites, and the Lord is saying, no loss in your life. No limitation in your life. No lack in your life. Miracle, miracle everywhere, every time. Miracles. Because you are like that Isaac. Like the Rechabites. Walking in the steps of the word of God. Living by the word of God all the days of your life. Like Abraham. Calling those things will be not as though they were. Calling those things will be not as though they were. Declaring the miracle before you see it. Declaring the wonders before you see each, calling those things will be not as though they were, and be not weak in faith. He was strong, and he knew, fully persuaded, that our God is able. Don't worry about the condition of the body, our God is able. Don't worry about the condition of your wife, our God is able. See for Caleb, be like Caleb. Converse like Caleb, confess like Caleb, communicate like Caleb. Let us go up at once because we're well able. I am not a grasshopper. My enemies are not giants. They are bread for us. I am able. I am able. I am able. Let divine ability search up in you. Let it stir you up. You are able. Like Luke, don't allow your sense knowledge, your scientific knowledge to overpower, overwhelm, swallow up your scripture knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord, revelation knowledge. Like Elisha, I believe. Greater I see. That is what me than he that is in the world. That the Shunammite, it is well, it is well, it is well. From this day on, believe the Lord. Sign for your miracle. I'm a candidate for miracle every day. A candidate for the supernatural every day. The people that do know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. I know God. I know his power. I know his promises. I know he cannot fail. I know he will not fail. He will. He will do what he has said. Like Moses, like Isaac. Like the Rechabites, like Abraham. Like Caleb, like Luke, like Elisha, like the Shunammite, I know it is well. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And the miracle people of God said. Already you have the miracle. Everything you desire is yours already in Jesus name. Your spiritual life is better today. Your professional life is higher today. Your family life is brighter today. And your future from now on will go from good to better to best in Jesus' name. The anointing of the Lord will never stop in your life. The miracle power of God will never stop in your mouth. It will continue permanent, perpetual in your life, all the days of your life in Jesus' name. I rejoice with you because I know you are blessed. And you'll keep on blessing you for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand, raise up your hand. This just will seal it up and confirm the miracle power of God in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for your goodness. We thank you because you have thought about good things concerning every brother and every sister, every child, every youth, every student here. Oh Lord, I pray all these good thoughts you have concerning everyone will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Lord, the past is gone. The past is buried. The past is forgotten. I pray, Lord, those who have never enjoyed any miracle, I pray this very moment, I send a miracle into your life. In Jesus' name. The peace of God in your soul. The purity of the Lord in your heart. And the power of the Lord upon your spirit. In Jesus' name. Your Lord will not be the Lord of the people of the world. All the diseases of Egypt will never come upon you again. Madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And all those harassments of the oppression, affliction, pressing in the bed, and something walking about in the body, there's no room for that anymore now. That is the temple of the Almighty God. And I command all those evil powers and evil operators, pack all your load and go in Jesus' name. Clear eyesight for everyone, clear insight for everyone, and clear revelation for everyone, and clear dominion for everyone. Oh Lord, I pray total healing, wholeness, with holiness, and with purity, given to everyone in Jesus' name. Victory upon victory, dominion upon dominion, joy everlasting in your life. And Lord, I pray all the weakness is totally taken away and the people of God, as they march out now going back home, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon them. And Lord, I pray no evil shall come upon anyone in Jesus' name. Every brother, testimony in your mouth. Every sister, testimony in your mouth. Every boy, every girl, testimony in your mouth. In Jesus' name. God will bless the work of your hand. If you have been sorrowful, you pass wipe all your tears away. A time of joy, an era of joy, a period of joy has come for everyone in Jesus' name. Miracle upon you. Miracle upon you. Miracle upon you. As Moses appeared before Pharaoh, miracle upon you in Jesus' name. As Isaac was prospered in Gera, miracles of prosperity upon you in Jesus' name. And the favor of the Lord continue the Rechabites, miracle of the Lord, and the favor of the Lord upon your life, all the days of your life, in the day, in the night, in the village, in the city, anywhere you find yourself, favor of the Lord upon your life, in Jesus' name. As God multiplied Abraham, as God prospered Abraham, and God told him his children will be like the, like the sand at the seashore, and the sand and the stars of heaven, multiplication for you multiplication for you multiplication for you in jesus name oh lord caleb said 40 and five years ago moses said this and today i am still as strong as i was 45 years ago i pray the strength of the lord the might of the lord and the power of the lord the vitality the wholeness coming from heaven like upon caleb will come upon you in jesus name and as Luke testified and said that God with God, all things are possible. I pray that that testimony of Luke will be upon your life. All things in your life. 
All things in your family, all things in your place of work, all things everywhere you go will be made possible in Jesus' name. No mountain will stop you. No river will stop you. No enemy will stop you. And no circumstance in this life will stop your progress in Jesus' name. I pray the host of the Lord around Elisha will be around you. And you'll find greater is he around you, greater is he within you, and greater is the power of heaven protecting you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Even after Elisha finished his earthly ministry and they buried him. And then somebody else died. And when he turned the bone, he touched the bones of Elisha, he got up. I pray everyone that touches you will get miracle. Your wife that touches you will get miracle. Your husband that touches you will get miracle. And your children that embrace you, miracles will flow from your body unto them in Jesus' name. As the Shunammite confess, I pray, O oh Lord, this will be the confession of everyone. While you are here on the ground, it is well with you. As we are going in the bus, it is well with you. As we are going on the road, it is well with you. When you get your place of work, it is well with you. Every good thing they are deciding in the place of work will be yours in Jesus' name. And your testimony every time will be, it is well. Your testimony every time will be, it is well. Tell me, tell me, tell me out loud, it is well. Tell me out loud, it is well. Let the heavens hear, it is well. Let Satan hear, it is well. Let your family hear, it is well. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Forward ever, backward never. Up ever, downward never. And the Lord will bring you to that territory of miracle every day of your life in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, tell somebody there it is well.